Hello and welcome to our second episode in our CCRF video mini series. My name is Mindy. I'm so glad that you're here tuning in with us today. I was introduced to the world of childhood cancer when my son was diagnosed at six weeks with a brain tumor. And I was introduced to Children's Cancer Research Fund when he was about seven months old uh, through his bone marrow transplant. So it's been an amazing journey. And as a community outreach coordinator for CCRF, I get to work with amazing families um, that inspire us and continue us to do the work that we're doing to end the world of childhood cancer. Today, I am joined by Tamar, father to four-time cancer survivor Zane. We will be discussing um, about being vulnerable and how letting others has helped Tamar and his whole family. Um, welcome, Tamar. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Mendy. It's just, it's just su such an awesome thing to have this technology uh, to be able to connect us like this. Absolutely. Uh, you had shared with us previously um, some thoughts and concepts about how dads struggle to ask for help uh, when their child is fighting for cancer. And so I'd love to hear a little bit uh, more about Zane and, and his journey and how, how that has shaped up what you learned about that. My goodness, where do I begin? Um... It's, uh, it's definitely uh, packed with a lot of adventures, uh, to, to say the least. Um, Zane is my firstborn. Uh, right now, he is an official teenager. He turned 13 last month. I don't know if that's scary or, you know, we got to celebrate. We'll do both. Yeah, but, I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both. <laughs> But um, I think just like any other father, when uh, the connection between a father and a son, you know, it's almost like a reflection. It's like, you know, a, a mom with her daughter. But I'm not saying that uh, you don't love your, uh, your other children as much, but it's, it's a special connection. Firstborn and then my boy, my right hand man, my sidekick. You know, it's like you see so many things that... Um, that you want to see or you want to see in your child growing up and living a normal life up until the age of five and a half years. We're doing sports. We were heavily invested in uh, martial arts, Taekwondo. Um, I remember vividly I, when I used to watch him with my wife sitting down on the bench watching Zane five, at five years old, training like a true champ. Uh, I mean, vigorous training he was getting ready to to train for his uh, red belt and you have to earn these belts you're not right, just right camping. and i'm talking like three four hours of, of constant training he's sweating and barely wow. getting any water breaks just to build up that stamina and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we get hit with a cancer diagnosis the big c the big uh uh you know, th th that one enemy that you always hear about, you see on TV, you hear about stories about, but you never ever in a million years would think that it will ever come and, uh, and hit home. Right. Uh, um, living, like I said, a normal life and all of a sudden just life comes crushing down. And me being a dad, and I think I, I speak on behalf of so many other dads, not everyone, but the majority, I think, you know, we have that, that uh, King Kong mentality, right? We just like pound our chests. I'm the provider. I'm the protector. I'm, I'm, like, I'm shielding the world from, from, uh, from, for, from my family and especially my kids, my youngsters. And then I get hit with this. I will never forget that one scary, helpless moment where I felt and I, and I spoke it out. And I, and I was usually, I usually kept my emotions inside. Mm -hmm. I let it build up like a volcano and then you explode every once mm -hmm. in a while you let that all out but I remember this one uh, one instant at the very beginning of this journey and I told this to my wife and a couple of my close friends and family I felt my hands were tied behind my back and I could not do a single darn mm -hmm. thing what do I do like I'm not used to this I know that if my my kid is sick take him to the doctor take him to the hospital do whatever you need to do 
my, my, my child is unhappy, what can I, I'll be a monkey for you just so I can make you laugh and smile and giggle and be happy again. But this, what the, like, this is not written in books. I don't have a manual for this. I don't have any instructions on how to handle this. So it was really an, an eye opener for me as, as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a human being. How do you, how do you survive this thing? And I have a wife and I have a second child at that time who didn't have um, our third child born yet. So, um, it, it, I mean, it, I'll tell you a mixed bag of emotions, fear, anger, uh, the feeling of helplessness. Like I said, it's all tied in. My hands are handcuffed behind my back and I cannot do a darn thing. The only thing that I resorted to, and it gave me so much peace, and, um, and, and I felt like I was anchored to the ground on, on solid foundation just to give me that push to keep going was my faith. Faith in God. God does not hurt human beings. God does not hurt his creatures. This is a test, but it is so difficult in the darkest of times to feel like, come on, really? That bad of a test, that tough of a test? Like, am I built for e to even handle this? I don't know. And then of course, you figure this out throughout the journey. Right, and that's Stop if I if I if I go on and on and on because this is uh... well no I under I I I understand and I'm so I'm so grateful that you're sharing you know those concepts and those thoughts and those moments with us because that's a really that visual of feeling like you're handcuffed your 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 hands are behind your back you're completely vulnerable right yep. this big dark thing has showed up and you feel like I don't have the tools to yep. do this. And so I think it's fascinating when, when we get put in those positions, um, there, you know, these life changing, those moments in the sand when you know nothing's ever gonna be, you know, that line in the sand, nothing's ever gonna be the same again. And then you have to figure out like, how, how do I do this? And I think that's what you were starting to talk about. So you would, you know, you, you feel like you're at rock bottom and so, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about how, how you did that. How did you start to take those next steps? Because as you said, life isn't stopping. It feels like it. You have a wife, you have a family, you have, you know, there's all these other things. So how, how do you do that when you feel like your hands are tied behind your back? Okay, now we're, we're peeling the layers, right? Now you're getting, right. you're getting deeper and deeper. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing, the first act of kindness that we came across at the very beginning of this journey, <clears throat> and I, I, I give credit to um, Zane's school principal. Zane had just joined elementary school, uh, KG, and... So, you know, we finished the first semester, going into the second one, and three months before school ends, we get hit with this, right? So uh, I will never forget, his name is uh, Jeff Sipos. He is also a cancer survivor, too. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so uh, just recently, as a matter of fact, last year. And I will never forget his comments to me. He came up to, to me and, uh, and my wife, and uh, he's like, listen, guys. And he, he's, he's very bubbly, very friendly very kind hearted human being. And, uh, and he says, let me know if you need me to come over and do your laundry, wash your clothes, fold your clothes, mow the lawn, uh, wash your dishes. I was like, huh? I'm not you, I'm, what are you talking, like to me, what are you talking about? I, and and I, to be quite honest, I was like, listen, this is, this is like too intimate now, like, I'm, I'm, what do you mean come right. and wash my clothes and fold my, like, we right. don't like, I, I offer help. Like I'm not, I'm not right. expecting from a male. Okay. So this hit me uh, very surprisingly. And I, we, you know, we, I, I, I talk a lot with my wife. We have a very open communication uh, with each other. And she worked a lot on me to, make me, I guess, more vulnerable, so I can speak up, so I can um, indulge deeper into my emotions, so I can share. 
because by doing that, I'm, I, I'm, I'm understanding what I am going through. Because as tough guys, you don't like that emotional section in, 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 our, in our being is always, uh, I don't want to say pressed down, but it's, it's, it, it becomes almost insignificant. Like I don't have time for this. I have time to go to work. I have time for my family. I have time for my house. I have time to deal with the day-to-day -day chores and so on and so forth, right? life in general. I don't have time for emotions. Every now and then I'll, I'll address them. But then with that one incident, like how kind is this to be offered mm -hmm. by Jeff, our friend, the school, the school principal? And then it began, it's, it's like it began an avalanche of assistance. And one thing led to another. It's like, he, you know, he never did laundry or mow the lawn or anything like that. But just the gesture itself softened me up. It buttered me up a little bit like, okay, you don't need to be King Kong because this is so huge. I cannot handle this on my own. I'm going to crack. And if I crack, I am no good to my wife. I'm no good to my kid. I'm no good to nobody. I'm not good. I am no good for the fight that God put us in. And this is the fight of our life. So it, it, I had to weigh things in a, in a manner that best suits me as a male as a, a father, as a husband, as a human being. Okay, weigh your options. You can take it all in and do it and take it all upon yourself and fight this fight on your own. And then eventually I'm probably gonna crack and not be here anymore. Right. And what good am I now to my family? Now I'm adding on more stress and more pressure. Or let me try this new thing here, uh, you know, allowing people open, crack open just slightly crack open that door and allow that help to come in and it it, it, it was life-changing to say the least because by me allowing myself that opportunity to be exposed and to be vulnerable it took so much off my shoulders so i can actually focus on things focus on the fight focus on the journey focus on me so i am ready to be i'm, I'm ready to fight with him because he needs me more than ever to be in the best positive, most positive uh, uh, vibe and feeling and, and, and mind status so I can fight with him. Because if, if I am negative, if I am down, if I am depressed, if I'm sad, I, I have all of that. But if it's constantly there, I'm not good to say I'm going to take him down and make things worse. Right. But by, by allowing that help to come in and say, okay, listen. We'll take this off your shoulder. We'll take that off your shoulder. Just focus on Zane right now. Focus on Zane right now. The preparation, Mindy, that we uh, that I, that I used to go through, or my wife used to go through, just so we can be with him mentally, not just emotionally, but mentally, be prepared. Every day was a battle. Every day at the hospital was a battle. Every day at the house was a battle. Every day in the outdoors it was a battle. Until this day, I'm, I'm learning to ease up a little bit because my my restrictions were so high up that it, it's just like, okay, you need to calm down and let him live his life a little bit and not be that concerned and that worried about him falling or getting injured. Believe it or not, and as crazy as this, as this sounds, not to jump into different topics, but seeing him today just getting uh, a cut or a bruise or falling off a bike, oh my God, it brings so much joy to me. Like, finally, just a normal right? <laughs> right? Isn't it, isn't it astonishing how, how different the lens is now through yep. everything you see? Like, it's just, you know, we had a very similar situation with my uh, tough guy husband and Connor was in the intensive care unit and some friends had showed up unexpectedly and, you know, sleepless days and nights and everything were just numb. And they're showing up with a laptop and they're going to send up this, this fund account and, they're gonna plan this and they're, you know, what what do you need at home, that whole thing. And and I remember my husband saying, like, we're we're good. Yep. I'm yep. over there like, no, we yeah, bring it. Like bring <laughs> come up and do the thing. And, That's exactly and I was we're, so we're grateful. Any of this. Yep. Right. For the girlfriend that put her hand on his knee and she said, This is bigger than you. Yep. And we are going through this together. And then I really appreciated, Tamar, when you were talking about just opening the door just a little bit, like a little crack. Like you didn't have to just open up all the vulnerability in one moment and be like, forget it. Like everyone just take over my life. I have no say. And I'm, you know, and, 
And I think that's such a realistic approach for people, for other people that are, that are in the position you were in or that, you know, are even navigating some of the, the later effects from being in that position. It's, it, it, it can just be the littlest step, right? You can just start little things and then kind of test out those waters. I'm like, okay, this is helpful. I yep. see this is affecting my family in a positive way. I'm, I'm, it, and it's such a gift, I think, to our families to let that help come in. Absolutely, absolutely. Appropriate, you know, for you, because ultimately you're still, you're still in charge of family. It's still, you guys get to make those decisions. Um, but I really hope that, that somebody watching this can take away that even just that little, you know, just like, just we're all, that's all we're asking is just the crack, right? Like just. Absolutely, yes. A, it, it, a little bit. I think what, uh, what, what made it work is that it actually worked. This is as simple as I can put it. I don't yeah. need to complicate things and, you know, put uh, big words into it. What made it work is that it actually worked. It made me feel good that I, when I made that decision again, you know, King Kong, I opened that door. Did I make the right decision? Oh, it makes me feel good. Oh, I did make the right decision. And then you open it up a little bit. And then, so you're constantly peeling off because, I mean, my goodness, seven years is a long time. Four cancers is a long time. And uh, there were a couple of instances that um, take your time. Life-threatening moments where I saw Zane twice in front of my eyes go. Twice. You cracked me, Mindy. <laughs> Thank you um, for sharing with us, Tamar. By leaving that door cracked open, it helped me just focus on these moments mm -hmm. because all life did not matter anymore. And just to make sure that he will be okay. Mm -hmm. And <sighs> to, to be able to be present in those life changing it, moments it, doesn't even seem to suit it. It, it really is because to try and, and, and try to make sense, okay, it's happening so fast and I just, I need him to come back and that's all I need to focus on. I don't want to focus on anybody else. I don't want to focus on anything else because I knew that I had an army behind me now that is there, like waiting, hey, we, we, we got you. We got you, brother. We got you, man. We, like, we have you. We have your family. We got your, like, don't worry. Just be there. Don't worry about the rest of the stuff. When you come out, you can deal with it. We're holding the fort, let's handle this for now. That gave me so much comfort and it gave me so much inner strength to be able to continue that fight. Because it, 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 it's breaking. This is, this is breaking stuff. This is not, you know, human beings, uh, yes, they're built to deal with tough situations, but at the same time, I've seen and we've encountered and we've, we've lived through other families demises, unfortunately, because it was so overwhelming and so overbearing, it, it, they could not handle it. Families fell apart uh, it, it, and, and from every aspect of life, whether it's marriage or relationships or finances or work, you name it. I mean, right. you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this, this, well, it, but you're this right, is, it touches everything. There's no, there's no corner, there's no square inch that it doesn't affect. And, and, and I think the sooner that realization comes it's terrifying in that moment of realizing like i I've, I've got no safe place to go i think when that happens i think it does as you were saying help crack the door a little bit more and like you said you knew you had an army behind you that is such a beautiful visual and they all have their shields they all yep. have their swords they're ready like we we've, we've got this 
And then knowing because of your previous experiences of this is good, this feels good, this feels right, I'm comfortable with this, this feels better. I think all of that foundation is totally why you could be, you know, focused 100% in those life-changing moments with Zane and, and your wife. And it's just, it's just amazing. And I, oh, I just, I just want, I just want so many, so many parents and caregivers to, to fully embrace that concept a, a little bit at a time. Yep. Um, I think it's, I think it's so powerful. And I think that it's really common, you know, in, in these journeys for everyone to go through that process. And, and sometimes they don't make it all the way through that process, right? They finally, where they put the box back out, like, no, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore because anger comes up and all these other things. Um, I think being grounded in your faith has obviously been a, a huge part of your guys' journey and why I think you are experiencing as much joy as you are now in the little moments, in the in the bruises, in the <laughs> on trampoline last summer, he split his lip up and we're like, oh, you're going to have a scar. We're going to have to go get a bunch of stitches. Let's go. You know, like it's, just, um, it, 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 it's, it's a, it's a beautiful outcome after going through all of the bad. I mean, there's just, you know, all the hardship. dark bits. After all the hardship, I think these these moments to me, and I and and I joke around a lot about about this with Zayn. He has so many scars on his body from the sure. from uh, from all the surgeries he's been through over forty five surgeries, I think, in total. Yeah, Four of them that's the a brain. lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That yes. I mean, that's I mean, that's forty five. Yeah, over forty five. Yeah. I think you know, yeah. like. How, how many do we, people do we know that maybe have had one or two in their whole lifetime? And even that, for them, it's, it's traumatic. It's, it's a thing. Yes, yes, yes. 45, and he's 13. And he's 13. And you know what, Mindy, what's funny? Like he, and this is to him, 100% credit for him and to him. He figured a way somehow. Kids are very smart. Very smart. He figured a way, you know what? I'm going to make a joke out of this thing. He's not shy of walking around topless. It's not like he's got pecs and biceps going, but you know, that's right, fine. Right. That's fine. I don't care. Have a little flap here and there. It's okay. We'll work on that <laughs> later. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, he walks around and he's, he is literally making fun of the scars. Oh, this is, and he, and he called, he named every one of the scars a name. Oh, this is a shark bite. This is a piranha bite. This is a swordfish. I'm like, where did he come up with this stuff? Right. And when you see that stuff and then you see him getting, uh, you know, hurt or getting cut or falling off a bike, I'm like, dude, this is, th th these are the scars of a fighter. These are the scars of a hero. These are the scars of a warrior. Be proud. Mm -hmm. Wear them and be proud. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, Boy Scouts. You know, they earn their, their badges. Well, guess right. what? You earn so many badges on you. Right. Be super proud. You, you are more accomplished as a 13-year-old today than you are than compared to so many other adults that I know of outside in this world, right? Yeah. So it's like yeah. victorious moments, triumphant moments after all the battles that we've been through. Right. And we, we right. continue to fight. And it sounds like he was in training before he even knew he was yeah. in training, right? I mean, just <laughs> yeah. passion with martial arts. And, and um, Tamar, I want you to know that you are too. You have gone through every battle with him. I know you've never left his side. And I know that he gets a lot of his strength from you and your family because I can see it and I can, and I can hear it. And I think it's, I think it's just beautiful. If, if people were looking to support families like yours, um, finding ways, how, how would you, how would you recommend approaching their struggle? 
And I think, you know, the principal example was amazing and he sounds like he, uh, an amazing person and a principal, um, but how, how would you suggest that they did that? There are so many ways that we've learned to do this. Uh, we, we acquired so many skills because on the side, we're actually, my wife and I are actually, uh, we try our best to reach out and help out families. And mm -hmm. on a business, it's not anything. It's just uh, it, paying it forward, right? It seems like because we, we've been exposed to so much and we've learned so much, we feel like we've acquired so many skills from this survival skills that we we try to help out as much as we can and and i'm, I'm glad that you asked that question because it, it's really tough it, it's super tough people who try to help don't know how to help and families who are in this position don't a lot of times don't know how to ask for help or right. even more difficult are too proud to ask for help I belong to that group for a very long time. And I still do. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm healthy. Thank God I'm healthy. I can still work. I can still function. I can still provide. I can still protect. So I'll do everything within my power and then some to make it happen. But at the end of the day, there will come time where you can't. And you don't want to. And all I'll say is this. People know their friends or some, we, we've been approached by strangers. We don't know. You can literally offer help. Don't expect a response back. If you want to help, help. We used to have people, uh, I guess they called it the, the meal train, I think. Mm -hmm. My wife handled that. It's like, like every day we open the door. Holy, what are we going to do with all this food? So many Magic times. food. Yeah. It's like popped up. Lunch, dinner, this, that. It's like, it, amazing stuff was happening. Uh, Offer help. I, I know of families who actually were approached by people who would come out and say, listen, I will mow the lawn. I will take care of this. I will clean the house. I'll do whatever. I'll take the kids to school, bring them back from school, take them to their activities, this, that, and the other. Um, financial assistance. Do what you can do to help. Do not expect a response back because these families are in such a dark hole they don't know if they're going or coming. They don't know the day from night. They don't know what's going to happen the next day. They don't know if their child will survive or not. They might have this, that strong faith, but I guarantee you, everybody will have that weak moment where like, oh my God, I'm going to lose it all. Yeah. I'm going to lose my child. I'm gonna, this is going to happen. My, my life is falling apart. My marriage is falling apart. My, my, my whole livelihood is falling apart. We don't know what anybody's battle is and do not expect to know, just offer the help and walk away. But my biggest suggestion as a male, because I'm, it's coming from that aspect, be in the shadow, be in their peripheral vision. This is what I mean by an army. When I know that I got so-and-so here, mm -hmm. if I end up something backwards, I know I'm gonna get caught. Someone is gonna catch me. Mm. Be in the shadow, don't just disappear, be there. And if you can be there, some people will, you know, will give you lip service. It's fine. And two colors of people will show. We've lost a few right. in, this, in this battle, you know, the ones that we right. thought were close and they're not and vice versa. So right. uh, it's a true testament to who is who and who have the true character to actually be there and say, you know what, I'm here to help, man. And I don't want anything in return. It's, it's, it's called being human. That's it. I don't expect anything in return. I just want to help because I see my fellow human being and I don't care what color you are, what race you are, what faith you are. It doesn't matter. We are a human race, period. We are here to help each other out because God forbid, if you were to fall and if you were to go through that, you better believe it, man. I'll be the first one to be running towards you, to catch you and hold you and make sure that I'm here for you. And sometimes I think for the... Uh, with a very proud dad, they don't want to hear too much. Sure. Right? They're a little too proud. They're like, okay, listen, I don't, don't give me advice. Just stand there. Be mute. You know, that Just that there. is po powerful. That sit in the sit in the shadows. Sit in the shadows with me. That's that that's all I want because that is yeah. such a 
sense of comfort. This is what I mean that when, when I went through these two traumatic incidents, inc and there were a lot, but these two are like carved in my heart. They hurt. To this day, they hurt. I feel like it happened yesterday. Right. I, I swear to you, Mindy, it's because of not only that, but because I knew there was an army in the shadow, not just one or two, an army. And I'm so grateful because it, this is God's blessings to us. And to me right. specifically as, as the father, as the male, as the human being that, okay, you guys really, you know, I'm, I'm a mountain. I'm, I, I am tough as nails, but I will get weak. That's the one thing my child, that if, if, if my child is ill, holy, that's going to make me shake in my boots and my knees right. and I'm gonna just come down. Right. Crumbling. But when right. I know they're there, that's all I need. That's my adrenaline that I'll be missing when I need it. Yeah. I think it's so powerful. Wonderful, wonderful advice. I, I just, oh, I'm so grateful for, for this conversation today. I have one more, can't, uh, one more question for you um, that we're gonna ask everybody in the series. What do you wish that more people knew about childhood cancer? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it can be one thing. It doesn't have to be all the things you wish they knew because I know I have a pretty long laundry <laughs> myself, <laughs> which is why we do what we do. Uh, like um, I have to roll out the script right now with the right. Long yeah, list. go get the scroll and and I'll be I'll be right here. Um, if I were to summarize this, I mean, be informed. Be informed. A lot of people depend. We we met families, and and this is why I say it's acquired knowledge and skill because we've been exposed to so much. Um, not a lot. Some families, unfortunately, rely so much on um, the medical team, so mm -hmm. much so that when you actually have a conversation with them, oh, so what does uh, what kind of cancer does your uh, child have? Uh, I can't remember the name. Okay, that's fine. But like, where is it? Oh, it's somewhere here. They don't know. Okay, so what treatment are they having? Oh, is the taking chemo? I know it's chemo, but what, what kind of chemo? Do you know the side effects? They'll hand them the information, but they're not informed. Mm -hmm. You need to be informed. You need to say, this, you're saving, you're going to save your child's life as much as you can. Be informed. If we learn anything from this experience, one of the biggest lessons that my wife and I learned, and, and we share this with everybody. I don't care if your child has the flu and ready to go get a flu shot. Ask the questions, mm -hmm. be informed because when you know, then when you go back home and you say, okay, he's suffering from so-and-so, or this is the side effect from this and that, at least now I can go back and say, okay, let me do some more homework on how I can undo the side effects of a specific treatment. That's one example. Another thing is just to be informed is power. Mm -hmm. It gives you some sort of control. I'm not the one who's making chemo or making the treatment, but it, it, it allows me to feel that, okay, maybe I, I, I unhooked one of the cuffs, the handcuffs, right? And now sure. I can work with one hand instead of both of them are done by hand. I'm doing something. And we were, we were approached by nurses and doctors who, I'm not tooting our, my horn or our horn whatsoever, but this is important because that tells us or tells me that we were on, some, on, on the right track when the medical staff themselves would come and say to us, we wish that parents, all the parents did that. Because then when you go home, you guys are here temporary. You're gonna take your child and go home and then have to deal with all the side effects. You know, Mindy, what that is like. Yeah. Horrific. That, and that alone, Tamar, is like a perfect topic for another whole conversation. Just that transition of care, even if you're still in treatment from when you are going from a, a team of 12 people in a, not a million, but it seems like it machines and medications and then you're home and that's, it's, it's, um, that's another, uh, yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole thing in itself. And, and I agree completely with you on um, being informed and how that can give you a sense of control, but also some physical control. You know, maybe you're not gonna be changing chemotherapy protocols but there are definitely things that you can have conversations about, right? That you're, 
because you know in the beginning it's all it's all foreign you I, you don't know anything you you just don't and it's just all these words and you're trying i'm like i remember thinking i'm never going to be able to pronounce our son's cancer and i could spell it perfectly and, and write it within i mean it was a lot shorter time than i thought i didn't give myself enough credit maybe in the stress um I, I wanted to add one one thing uh, about, yeah. being, about being informed. Childhood cancer is a taboo topic. For we uh, we learned so much. Zane, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know this. Zane is actually a childhood cancer ambassador. He goes out to speak publicly on stage and addresses as many people. We made sure that he is he, he becomes a voice. We made sure as a family, as parents, even his sister, we have, he has two younger, but the one, who's the, the middle child, very, very outspoken and make sure that do not be afraid of this topic. Speak about it because when you speak about it, you help people to learn just to be informed. When you're informed, again, it goes, ties in when you feel that you're in control or you're in power, learn just because it didn't hit you home. You never know who you might be able to help in the future. Can, it, 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 it became, um, it, it, this has become such a, a scary lifestyle that you don't even ask the question if someone or if cancer is going to hit somebody. It's, it's a question of when will it hit. Right. And okay, I, I need to be somewhat prepared. You can never be prepared, but you need to be somewhat prepared. At least right. answer, answer myself some questions. I don't need to worry about the rest of I need to answer myself questions. So, I can have the sanity and I can have the strength to stand on both my feet and be able to function. Right. Good, bad, or different, it doesn't matter, but just be there and be present. So that's... Yeah. Oh, Tamara, that's just wonderful. I am so grateful for your time today and this conversation. And I know without a doubt, you are going to inspire, as you already have, many families, many of the tough guys, get out of the screen that door right you can do right, that door open just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit um and then uh to let to let our viewers know you can read more about tamar and zane's story by visiting the link that will be uh in the description below this video so thank you Andy, and thank you i appreciate it